Oh yeah, Martin here. Thank you very much indeed for joining me once again um, for some woodworking, or some wood turning rather. Um, today I thought I would um, have a go at turning a napkin ring holder and six napkin rings. Um, and a big shout out to Captain Eddie in the US, um, whose method of turning the napkin rings um, I used for this. I've never turned anything like it before, um, and as a first effort, um, I'm quite pleased. Um, the wood's been cut for about 20 years, and it's been drying, and it's been sealed and stuff, so it's rock hard, um, and it's beautifully dry. Um, and the napkin rings, as you can see, I've just decorated with um, a, a burnt black line, um, and they've just been finished with, uh, with Danish oil after being sanded down to 600 grit. So there are six, whoops, there are six napkin rings and um, the holder um, that is out of um, a single piece um, and has um, similar twin burnt lines at the bottom and there's a very nice knot feature in the wood as well. So thanks for joining me and let's take a look at how I made the napkin rings and holder. church there and a yew tree that was um, cut down some 20 odd years ago. And today I thought I would make, turn some napkin rings out of this piece. Um, it's one of the straightest pieces um, in the collection um, and it's got some lovely colours, coloration in it. Um, but when I run it down to size, um, I think most of the red in here is going to come through. So. I don't want that, I want to have some of this yellow as well, so I'm going to put it into um, in between centres on the lathe um, at an angle um, to hopefully get some of that yellow in the, um, in the rings. On one end of the, of the spindle I've, uh, <coughs> uh, um, I've marked a 40mm diameter circle, um, which is going to be the outside diameter of the rings. And I've done roughly the same on the other end, but there's lots of wax and you can't quite see the... I don't think you can quite see the mark there. Um, but I have marked the centre. So let's get this in between the centres. Now the piece is um, about 33 centimetres long, which for those in the States is about 13 inches roughly. And I'm hoping to get 8 or 10 decent rings out of the piece and then from another piece of wood another piece of yew um, make a, a spike as it were and a base um, on which to put them when, when the whole thing's finished so right face shield on and let's get roughing it down down to 42 millimeters now on the on the headstock end um, I've turned a I've turned a spigot for the chuck and on the tailstock end I've squared it off where I'm going to take some measurements down so I'm going to set my compasses to 25 ish millimeters which is about an inch. And I'm going to set the lathe going slowly. Then I'm going to mark off where each of the rings is going to be. So, one there. 
Yeah, brilliant. So I've got enough for 11 rings. Now what I'm going to do next um, is I'm going to shape each one of the rings. I'm going to put the parting tool. This is um, um, a method um, I saw the other night by um, Captain Eddie. Um, so I'm going to put a little parting tool in there, down a few millimetres, um, and then shape each of the rings in turn, uh, and then finish each of the rings, and then with the force and a bit, drill in through the end slowly, and hopefully, the theory is, they part off as they go through. But, we'll see. So I'm going to start just by putting the parting tool in just a few millimetres on the line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round over each of... Um, each of the rings. I don't, I don't want a particularly um, fancy ring. Um, being you and being from a church, then um, churches are generally fairly, uh, fairly understated. So I'm going to um, just round over each of the rings just a little bit um, and then add a, I think, just a black line um, in there. I think. We'll see. So I'm going to spin the gauge wherever it's gone. And I'll start with this one because it's in the middle. Um, this one over here, which is at the end, you can't really see, so I'll just go to this one. That's all I'm going to do with it. It's just round it down from the top um, down to where um, I took the, the thin parting tool, just so we get a nice little round in there. And that will also be rounded off a little bit more when I take uh, the sanding pads to it. So I'll go and do the other rings, all apart from the very last one um, over by the chuck, um, but you'll see why. Um, Uh, here we go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I'm not going to do this one over here by the chuck. I'm going to leave that one, so I've got a set of 10, 10 rings, um, which I've rounded off, um, and I've had to take the parting tool back in, just to make sure that um, it goes down um, far enough, so when the, so when the force a bit drives through, um, it will be able to... Um, part of each of the rings. So I'm going to go round. I'm going to go round each of the rings now um, and finish them down to 600 grit. Um, and there we go. Now sand it down to 600 grit. Um, I am going to put a little um, black line along or around each one, and then I'm going to finish each one individually on. Um, um, on a jam challenge, but I don't have a burning wire, and the only wire I've got in the shop is this silver wire. So it's going to be a fairly expensive burning job. So I'm going to take my point tool, my Henry Taylor point tool, and just make a couple of little lines just to get the burn started. Start at the end. There we go. I'm 
not overly concerned that they're not all exactly the same distance from the end because this is handmade after all. Um, and I'm not a production turner, nor am I a copy turner. So, right, got the string, um, and I've drilled a couple of one millimetre holes um, at the end of two pieces of um, scrap. I threaded the uh, uh, silver wire through, and then just twisted it round like that, and hopefully that'll hold enough to um, burn the wood. So I'll do... Um, I'll do this one, or this one, yeah, one or the other, um, so you can see how it burns. And I'm just going to lay the wire into the into the groove I've just made, like so, and hopefully it'll get hot enough to burn. Got the lathe going about 2,000 RPM. There we go. And the wire breaks. There we go, the wire broke. So, obviously, either I got it too hot, or silver wire doesn't like to be burnt too hot. There we go. That's the, um, that's the burning done. Um, now I'm going to I'm going to take the force in a bit <laughs> um, onto the tail stock um, and part off each of the each of the rings and then make a little jam chuck um, over here at the little bit of wood that we've got left at the end of the branch. Right, there's the um, there's the force in a bit. Um, but now I've taken the tail stock away and looking at the piece that's uh, <coughs> that's in the chuck. It's not running completely true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the chuck up a tiny bit, the piece of turn, wind the tail stock in, just so the point of the force in a bit is in the reference point from the from the live centre, and then screw the life out of the ugh, chuck at the other end and hopefully it will hold true as we go through all the pieces. So let's just approach and then very carefully guide the force a bit into the wood and hopefully it won't catch. the napkin ring that's been fairly neatly parted off. It's quite thin. Hmm. Should be alright. So yeah, there we go. Ow! That's hot. Yeah, that's one of them. And then I've just got the others to do. But I need to change the force. I've parted each of them off. Um, and I now have a set of six, um, six napkin rings, um, which isn't too bad. Um, I started off with, um, ten, but a couple of them split. I mean, they are very thin. Um, I need to have, I think I need to have made them a little bit thicker. Um, but, you know what, it's my first go, so I'm not, um, I'm not entirely disappointed. So let's take a look over here. Well, what I've got left in the chuck um, is this bit, which is the end of um, end of the spindle. And in the front, I'll show you that. Um, in the front here is a mark from the force a bit. Ow, it's still hot. Um, yeah, there's a mark from the force a bit as it went through, which is the internal diameter of the individual rings. So I need to turn this down, so it's just under halfway, I think, just under halfway, um, down to that mark, so I can make a 
sort of friction jam chuck that I can put one of the rings onto, or each of the rings onto, so I can finish the inside a little bit and finish the outside of each ring. So the, in, the inside of each piece is only going to be finished down to 240 because it's not really going to be seen. I'm just going to round off um, the side and then oil. Uh, right, there we go. That's the inside done. plan for the base went dreadfully wrong. Um, it cracked basically. Hang on. Um, yeah, I had it on the chuck uh, and it uh, and it cracked, um, which was a real bum actually because it was going to be quite nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this piece, um, this piece of you. Um, I think, yeah, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to turn the base out of this, but as one piece. Well, that's the plan anyway. So first off, I need to get it round, square it off and stuff like that. And um, yeah, actually, that's really annoyed me. I'm really annoyed that that first base went wrong. But never mind, we'll use this piece. Right, onwards and upwards. Right, here we go again. First job is to turn it round. I won't, I'm not going to bore you with all the details. Um, but basically, uh, the headstock end is going to be the... No, it's not. I've changed my mind. I'm going to turn a tenon, one end, yeah, I'm going to turn it round first and then I'm going to decide what I'm going to do because I'm kind of losing the will to live with it now. Right, face mask, let's get turning. There we are, finally. There's the, um, the tenon formed. Now I can flip this over and put it into the chuck. Now, um, now, now I've got the base and stuff um, reversed in the chuck, I can take a ring, one of the napkin rings I made, and I can see that it's uh, 23mm, which is um, just shy of an inch. And I've got six of them. So, because I've got six of them, I need at least six inches um, on my spike. So what I'm going to do actually is mark off roughly six and a half inches to this point here from the tailstock end, which is going which is going to be where all the rings are going to sit. So this part this part I need to take down to 
roughly 25 mil um, in diameter. I mean, these are the rings are 35 mil in diameter. So if I take the spike down to 25-ish millimeters um, in diameter, then I'll have a nice. Um, then I'll have a nice uh, spike to uh, put them onto. And then the base, um, I'm going to put a mark, mark of part of the base off about there-ish, which is about 10 mil in from the chuck. Um, and then I can kind of um, play around a little bit with some decorative stuff about there, which is another 10 mil in from the left. So I've got a mark six and a half inches from the from the tailstock, then um, a mark in about 10, 12 mil from the chuck where I can part it off, and then another mark in, a, in another 10 mil here um, where I can start decorating up to where the spike needs to be. So I'm going to start hacking down hacking down this this piece to um, to form the spike and I'll come back when it's done. I'm going to take it from here. Yeah, that'll look nice actually. Yeah, I'll leave it like that and I'm, I'm gonna, when I sand this down, I'm gonna put a black, two black lines in down here um, on the very bottom of the base to reflect black lines on the rings themselves. But first of all I need to round off the end which is going to be um, which is going to be interesting because I can't I'll bring the tail stock up just to start it off just to give it a little bit of support just while I round it over. raggedy in places but I'll sort that out with the sanding which I will do now. Um, I won't bore you with um, the sanding process but I will come back when I'm down to 600 grit. I'm just going to finish off a little bit with um, some 600 grit just to take off um, the tiny little edges that I've got down here and then oil.
we go. There is the finished spike for the, for the napkin rings, and I just need to take the little nub off uh, the bottom there, which I'll do with the skew chisel. And then we'll be done, finally. And here we are. Here is the finished item. Um, it's taken hours to do this, um, mainly because the first base broke um, or split, as as you saw, um, and the and the last or th this uh, this this base and spike that it's on um, is out of a single piece of wood, and I'm really pleased with it. Um, overall, I've loved doing it. Um, I was turning bowl after bowl after bowl and pen after pen after pen. Um, so thank you to everybody on YouTube um, who posts wood turning videos. So thank you very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you all again very soon when I turn something else. Cheers now, bye bye.